Okay, well, let's see if we can make a fat man happy. So we're going to take that Reddit post we had, and I'm going to attempt to make that dice seem like a fun thing to try. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be possible, given how small the font's going to be, but we'll play around with it and see. Might wind up making this dice a little bit bigger than a normal D20. But here we are, we've got uh, my D20 up in Blender, and I will have a video coming out soon, a series of videos of just how I go about making dice from start to finish. So do definitely keep an eye out for that. So if you want to see what I do to actually make these dice, that's that video, once it's up, I will probably leave a link in the, what is the thing, up in the corner, little link that should be popping up right now if I remember to come back and do it. But definitely check that out. But for the time being, I have my D20 already made and preset. So the thing I need to do from here is to go ahead and relabel the numbers. I have all of the math equations over in a notepad on the side. There's only one that I'm going to change. And that is going to be a little Easter egg for the one. And I'm changing that to this. Uh, if you want to work out the math for that, you're more than welcome to. I will leave a link in the description below to number files who will go over this more in detail. But for now, let's go ahead and get all of these equations changed out. So basically, I'm just going to go to my two. And what did I see that I needed this to be at? I think it was like a one. Is that right? I think so. 1.5 sounds what I needed. That, and then we're just going to. Nope, not you. Maybe there. Three, same thing. And if you're wondering, like, what all the keys that I'm hitting to do all of these shenanigans. Um, basically, I'm using the G key to move, put that back, uh, tab to go ahead and go into edit mode for a text. And like I said, I'll have an entire video going over all of this and then going over here and changing the size to 1.5. Keep it in G by accident. And I'm moving this here with uh, snapping on vertex center, align, rotate and move. Uh, so yeah, that's how I'm moving everything. I explain that because I tend to see videos where people will go through and like, oh, this is how I do everything, but they don't actually explain how they're doing some of the stuff like this, which would be very useful if you were trying to copy. And you'll see me keep hitting G a lot before hitting tab, and I do that constantly, and I hate that I do that constantly. Um, yeah, it looks about the same size. Uh, I did some extra things for this, for the uh, subscript numbers. I basically just made extra fonts for those and made them a little bit smaller and manually moved them around. But that's fine. Five and let's go to six now. And I don't need those uh, dots for the six. Over here, six tab. and put you there. So you may be able to see why this might be a problem. If you can't see yet, stick around and we'll see if it becomes a problem. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I'm going from 2 to 20 just because I've already done it with 1, uh, but I'm going to grab everything, space, convert, to mesh. Now we go and hide you. Math, floating math, math everywhere. It's a math nightmare. Alright, oh god, no, come back here. Let's click this button here. It's going to be the go into editor button. Press mouse over your workspace, press A. 
B and oh, minus one. Now, this is where I don't know if we're gonna have success or not. Because then, yeah, these numbers might be too small to pull this off and that's what I'm worried about. I'm gonna put the dice back. And I'm gonna select dice or numbers one to twenty by holding shift, click or click twenty, hold shift, click on one. I'm gonna hit space again and type join. I'm gonna leave my edit. Then I'm going to do that and do join. Now they're all one shape. I'm gonna scale this up by 1.01. I'm not gonna do that yet. First I'm gonna hit C, which centers. I've got C bound to center, but otherwise you wanna right click or you wanna select it, hold control, right click, set origin to center of mass or center of volume, however you wanna do it. Now I'm going to hit S to scale, and then I'm gonna type 1.01. The reason I do that is I want the numbers to be ever so slightly larger than the dice itself, otherwise our next step will get issues. Now before doing that, I'm gonna come up to here. There we go, phase orientation, all right. All right, so when we do that, you see that all the numbers are red. Uh, that means that their normals are facing inwards. Normals is being the outwardmost face or basically the outside of the shape is facing on the end of the shape. We don't want that, that will actually cause problems. Um, you see how this nice is, this D20 is nice and blue everywhere, except for the numbers. So the numbers, we're gonna grab that, click on it, go into edit mode by pressing tab, pressing the A key to select all, hold shift and press N or hold, hit space and type in normals and then recalculate normals. So now when we leave that and deselect those, you see now everything is nice and blue. And once we've done that, we see no red. You're gonna select the D20, go over to add modifier, add a Boolean difference, grab your eyedropper tool, select the D20, and then X out of that because you clicked on the wrong thing. Select the D20, now add the Boolean. I'm good at this. Select the 20 and then apply. Make sure the or the operation is different. It should be that by default, but that'll be fine. So when you click apply, nothing will happen. Go here, X delete. Now we have our dice made. So now that we have that done, I'm going to go ahead and export this as an STL. Okay, so that didn't work. That's pretty much what I thought. You can see the numbers are kind of there, but they're really hard to see. And the moment that I start polishing this, that's they're just going to completely go away. And uh, yeah, it didn't work. It really didn't work. <laughs> So this is why we save at this particular step. Because um, if I had not saved at this particular step, then I would be starting over from scratch, but we're pretty good from here. Uh, the one's gonna be annoying, but I'll do that in just a moment.
after a couple of attempts, finally got this to kind of an acceptable level. Um, so you can see that's a little bit white right now. That's just because I did the first level of sanding just to make sure that the numbers worked. And it's just two or three passes on each side with uh, 220, uh, just dry sanded. And you'll see that there's a little layer line right there, but that's not gonna cause too much of a problem. <sighs> the numbers are all there now, so I'm gonna go clean this dice up so all of the white will go away because all of that is actually just resin particulate that's trapped in the numbers. I was leaving it there for the time being just so the numbers actually show up better on camera. But for the purposes of sanding this the rest of the way, those will actually need to go because those will cause a problem. After cleaning that up, you can see that the numbers, that's kind of why I left that there because you can't really see any of the numbers right now. And for video purposes, that's kind of important. But for our purposes, not so much. And I'm trying a new thing today where I'm putting my Zona paper just in warm water so I don't have to soak it. The paper will already just be wet. The issue with these is going to be remembering where you are. And I think, I know where the one is, because the one is the log. So I think what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take one and 20, which would be opposite one, up to glass, and then do the rest of it. That way I have anchor points which is going to work all the way up until like four or five grit or four or five paper. So I think after Zona Pink, I'm not even going to be able to tell where the, those anchor points are anymore. So that'll be fun. straight through that. At least I can. I don't know if the camera will let you, but and I'm not up there to actually see. And I don't have a monitor, so I'm using my just my cell phone to record these right now. At some point, I wouldn't mind getting like an actual camera and then like a 4K monitor so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, but for the time being, just using a, a Galaxy S10. Uh, Alrighty. So now we're gonna go back through since I have my two anchor points now and polish the rest of these. I haven't decided exactly what I'm gonna do for the dice itself yet. Because this is, again, this is just the master, so. Who knows? Could be anything. Could be a boat. I, I, haven't, I don't really, I'm not really sure how I'm gonna edit these, but I'm trying to not talk too much about what exactly I'm doing at the moment because what I'm probably going to do, which makes the most sense to me, is I'm going to basically fast forward all of this footage, which you're probably watching right now, and just stretch my commentary over it. So I'm not going to, like I'm talking about what I'm doing, but I'm going to say I'm now polishing the seven side when I'm actually polishing ten sides in the time that it took me to say that. Fresh out of the fresh out of the pressure pot, we went ahead and snipped the cup in four locations. So we're just gonna go ahead and peel that off now. Um, I've never really found a good way to actually save the cup. It, generally these cups are just a write off, but that's not an issue. Like I said, cups are cheap. So we're now gonna go down this side. You do kind of want to act a little quick in doing this just because there's going to be a little bit of gas re-expanding and you don't want that to warp the mold. But it should mostly be okay. You shouldn't really have that as a huge issue. And I'm going to cut down in two directions. And then first I'll take this dice out. There we go. The stick's still attached. 
and then we're going to follow that hole, little hole in there all the way down to the dice. You're probably going to mark your dice up doing this, just because, especially because, well, especially because we don't have clear. So, do just keep that in mind. And I'm just pulling away from the dice, that way I can see where it is, that way I'm not at least avoid, trying to avoid splitting any numbers. Now we just pull all of these out. What's that noise? Sounds like bones cracking. There we go. And then we've got to look at all that math. So I just got some resin or some pigment from Stuart Semple. And I'm gonna mess with that, and that is this uh, black powder. I needed a black, and I figured that that would look pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and mix up some Art and Glow resin. Say one to one resin by volume. I'm gonna use, for a dice that size, I'm probably gonna do two pumps of each. I have mine on pumps, so I can just get precise. And then any excess will just be put into probably a little dump mold of some kind. I don't know. Or just put into a other dice. Well, that is interesting. I don't know where that quite went. I can't imagine that dice went far. Oh, I set it in here. Okay. That's why I couldn't see it. I set it in one of my shelves. Let's start again. Bust out our Japanese stir stick. Sealed for your protection. And generally when you're working with resin, you want to wear gloves, but I'm not using enough that I am afraid of overflow. So for the time being, I'm just not going to have any on. But if you're working with enough where there is a risk of it overflowing, definitely wear gloves. So with mixing pigment in, the first thing you want to do is get the pigment under the liquid. Otherwise you'll have a little uh, mushroom cloud of pigment everywhere. And that is going to go very black, and that is exactly what I want. So we're going to go ahead and mix that up as much as we can. That's a beautiful black. And then, after mixing it for a few minutes, we'll go ahead and pour it into the other container. This is the point where I'll put gloves on, because here's where we run a risk of overflowing. Not only a risk of overflowing, this is going to overflow because this is not a clear container, so I don't have a way of knowing how much needs to go into it. So that is where I'm gonna put gloves on. Because you generally don't want this stuff on you. I won't need a glove on this hand because it's not gonna come in contact with the resin. So we're just gonna stick this in, squirt, refill.
pushing up from the bottom, you can see that there are air bubbles still coming out. And then letting it pull back in. And then again, let the air bubbles settle out. So and because the bottom is a little bit soft and thin, I can actually do this to try to see if we can push any bubbles out. And it seems like we've got it good there. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get this into the pot, crank that up to 30, to, uh, not 30, three bar, and then that'll be good to go. These are out of the pressure pot and out of the mold, actually. Uh, the sprue actually popped off while I was taking it out of the mold, but that's quite all right, because I was just gonna cut that off with a bit of flush cutters, flush cutters, flush cutters. All knives are flesh cutters, aren't they? Hmm, interesting. Things to think about. Uh, but yeah, so we've got a little tiny nub of a sprue that we're gonna need to polish down, as well as a little bit of flashing on a couple of numbers that we'll polish. And then there's one side in particular, which is this side, that I'm gonna run through the grits again. Just get a little bit sharper. So, first thing I wanna do is get rid of that little nub and I'll run that over. things happen since I polished this dice. One, my camera died. So I went through and painted the numbers in this dice uh, and while I was doing that the camera died so I don't know how much of that footage actually is on the phone so we're probably just gonna jump back to after polishing the dice because um, the actual good part about that is I didn't wind up liking that paint color so I'm just gonna change it anyway. So doesn't really matter on that. Um, I was trying to use this uh, shifter pigment that is supposed to be red to gold, but it's actually just more green to pink. Um, which isn't bad, I just I don't like how it looked on the dice, so I'm just going to change that anyway. I don't think I'm just going to change it to a straight white. I think uh, white will stand out pretty well. Um, the reason I didn't like it is it didn't, a lot of the numbers it didn't really hold into. I could not get it to seat into those numbers. And it just, I just wound up uh, stripping as much of it as I could. And I'm just going to switch it over to white. I think that'll look better anyway. But let's get back to that part where we're just going to paint this. And we should be good. And we've got just a little paintbrush and my army painter war paints this is just matte white uh, if you're interested in this uh, shifter pigment i i'll leave a link to it in the description i off the top of my head i don't remember the website that i got this from but i'll leave a link to that website in the description it is uh vallejo i think v-a-l-l-e-j-o i think it's vallejo um Blagio, whatever but we're gonna go ahead and just paint this one Numbers white. Uh, this army painter paint is a bit thicker than the shifter paint, so it'll tend to stick a little bit better. Yeah, that already looks a lot better. Maybe a little boring just being white on black, but I'm not completely upset with that. Uh, that number. So basically, we're going to do a push and pull method of painting where you just push the paint into the crevices as much as you can and then pull away the excess. And just wipe it away. I'm probably gonna need more than what I've put on my palette. My palette being, of course, a paper plate. Only the best painters use paper plates as their palettes. That's a true fact. So I think if I re were to remake this dice, one of the big things that I would change, 
I may actually go and do that is each of the fours I would actually remove the middle post uh, so it would just kind of be a triangle on a stick instead I think that would come out looking better at this scale or at this number scale because I can't really make the numbers much bigger the the way that I make the numbers bigger is make the dice bigger that the numbers are kind of at their limit of what I can do with them uh, so the only other thing to make the everything stand out a little bit better is to kind of hollow out the fours. Yeah, I'm liking this white a lot better than that uh, pink green. I think I would have liked it a little bit better if it were actually red to gold, but it just, it was pink green. That's just kind of it. It, it's supposed to be applied to a dark surface, and I figured applying it to matte black would be enough to be a dark enough surface, but it still, it, it came out still on the parts that it was like exposed on that I needed to shave away, in, polish away anyway, was still pink and green. And in the numbers, it was just pink. The green didn't even show through, like even slightly. Um, which I probably will revisit on a more traditional dice where the numbers would be a little bit larger. So more something where they can actually fit in a little bit better. With these it just it couldn't really fit in. I think that was just kind of the biggest issue with it, is that it just couldn't it couldn't fit into the numbers enough to actually do what it was supposed to. So what we're doing now, once we get these painted, I'll go back through uh, a couple of my polyzonas. I did polish it down a little bit uh, and I'll need to bring it back up. But traditionally I would just put this paint on and then I would go through zona white Zona White is enough to actually like it Zona White's enough to bring it back up to shine and get rid of the paint. Get in there. Yeah, pushing into some of these numbers is a little bit tricky because how small they are. So yeah, if this dice were to be remade, I would do a, probably a size up. I'd probably change it because I think this is a 30 or 35 millimeter. I'd probably take it up to a 45. I think 45 would have worked pretty well for it. Because honestly, the numbers actually did show up on a traditional scale, which I think is like 18 to 20. It's just a lot of the thinner symbols, such as the power or square root symbols, uh, didn't show up. They, they were just barely there and any level of polishing would have made them just go away. Okay, let's put these in here. Basically my bigger thing right now is just to get this paint in here as much as possible. And your hands are gonna get dirty, that's not a problem. Just wash them afterwards. Especially this paint, it uh, tends to clump together and form a, almost just a, not a cloth exactly, but like a latex sheet, just like rubber or something, and I can just peel it off. It's weird. I guess that's a, an intended property of it, but I don't know, I've not seen paint act like that before. That said, I don't deal with a lot of paint, not traditionally. I've not noticed acrylics do that, so that is pretty much the extent of my knowledge of paints is acrylics. Acrylics tend to get more chippy than rubbery. I'm actually looking at the labels, apparently these are acrylics, which I guess, yeah, um, but 
I don't handle the way I've had other acrylics. I don't know. Maybe my other acrylics were just garbage. I don't know. They seem to be pretty decent. start at Zona Gray and just see if that's enough to pull this off. Might be. Normally I can use Zona White, but I pulled this back down to Zona, uh, to Zona, what did you, sorry, I'm going to Zona Light Blue. I pulled it down to Zona Gray. Let's see. Can you pull that off? Very nicely, actually. That being the case, let's go. There is my anchor. All right, we are finally at the end of this dice making journey. It's been a couple of days work, a bunch of revisions, and a lot of troubleshooting. But I think in the end, we've got a pretty good product I think this is what we were looking for in the beginning. It's not quite the same. The numbers obviously aren't on the bottommost layer, but that was just going to be unrealistic for a dice of a traditional size or anywhere near a traditional size. It is possible to do, but that dice would have to probably be a 60 millimeter, which is not impossible. It's not even outside of the realm of something I might do. Just for a one-off dice, it was a bit of bit more resin that I wanted to spend in one go. That said, though, we have our math dice, the four 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 dice, and it is very beautiful, if I may say so myself. So we got forty four plus point four, or times point four plus four. So. I don't remember. <laughs> Let's cheat, shall we? Okay, so 24 divided by four, and then that times one half. So half 24 divided by four was six, correct? Three, isn't it? Yeah, three. Twenty-four divided by four. Yeah, four. Yeah. Okay. I'm an idiot. It's yeah, six divided by two. Or technically six times one half, which is yeah, six and yeah. Screw this dice.